morning. Today we're going to do a CPU walkthrough on a 2024 London Air 4551. We're going to start today with a leveling system. Uh, before you run the leveling system out, we want to make sure our slides are, have been ran out uh, with the coach on airbags. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more on the outside of the coach later, but come on up. We'll uh, start with the leveling system. So for the leveling system to operate, we'll need to have the key uh, on. You'll see the LED lights come on. Um, and the easiest way to actually level the coach is to push auto level. Uh, it'll go through a sequence where it dumps the airbags before it starts putting the jacks down. Uh, once the air is dumped from the bags, you'll hear the pump come on and uh, start putting the jacks down. The yellow indicators around the outside here, there's one in the front, one on each side and one in the rear. That indicates you're a little bit low on that side. So uh, based on which direction is lowest, we'll de determine which jacks go down first. That's all computerized. Um, in the HWH system, so you don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> in the event that the coach would be, the parking area that you're in would be so far off a level that the HWH system could not level the coach, uh, the excess slope warning would come on. And there's also a triangle right here. Uh, that would come on and illuminate if the HWH system is uh, seeing a fault. Um, if you would see that fault, the first uh, the first thing to do in rectifying that would be the HWH reset switch right up here in the front overhead cabinet. It says HWH master reset switch. So. You would try that before uh, anything else. Okay, so now we have went through the leveling cycle. It shows us all four jacks are down and there's no amber lights on, so the coach is level. So now we can turn the key off and um, we're good to, to go. We're, we're level and should stay level uh, for the length of your camping stay. When you get ready to go, uh, once again, you need to turn the key on. And the easiest way to store them is hit auto store. And <clears throat> what this is going to going to bring the jacks up. They'll end up coming up one at a time. And uh, once they're all up and uh, the coach is aired up, I like to say start the coach during this process instead of just turning the key on because that does um, provide air pressure. And as it, um, as it uh, retracts the jacks, the, the airbags will be receiving uh, air pressure and when the travel mode light comes on, you'll actually, um, you'll, you'll need to look at your gauges, but you'll be um, pretty much ready to travel if, as long as your air pressure gauges are up. Okay, one other thing on this. In the event that you would get the coach level or you didn't want to use the auto level, you can manually um, extend the jacks um, or retract them with the arrows. So this is the front of the coach, um, and the, these arrows would take it the front 
up and down. It would deploy two jacks at a time, uh, and the same with the sides. So either the front two jacks would go down, the side two jacks would go down, the rear two jacks would go down, or the uh, passenger side two jacks would go down. They work in uh, pairs. So that's the quick rundown on your um, leveling system. Uh, of course, you can use the cancel button at any time if you need to abort the um, process that you're in the middle of. So all of our jacks have retracted. We're in travel mode. Um, we're good to go. We can shut the um, we can shut the system off and turn the key off if we want to. Next, we have the Allison transmission shift pad, and um, the key will need to be on for it to light up. Uh, you can select your gear here, reverse, obviously for R is for reverse, D is for drive. Neutral, anytime that you're parked, you'll want to put it in neutral and set the park brake by pulling it towards you. That applies the park brake. Um, and then if you're in drive, uh, there's a mode selector here. You can uh, select between economy mode and uh, some other performance modes uh, or you can uh, manually uh, shift the transmission with the up and down arrows. You can also, uh, once the transmission is um, warm, you can push the two arrow buttons and get the transmission fluid level readout uh, on the display here. Uh, that's all covered in your uh, Allison transmission uh, booklet. It comes with your chassis paperwork. Uh, next up here, we have the tag dump switch. So if you have it in the auto mode and you put the coach in reverse, it would automatically dump the tag axle to allow you to turn easier. Uh, you can also manually dump it. Um, back this way it's a momentary contact so uh, if you're making a sharp turn uh, you can manually dump it as soon as you release it it'll air back up it's also good uh, if you need a little more traction on your drive axle uh, it'll take the weight off of the tag and put a little more um, weight on the drive axle it's good in slippery conditions uh, engine brake on and off uh, this actually just turns the engine brake on and off enables it and then the switch beside it here determines the amount of uh, force that the engine brake has so you got high medium and low for there just some cup holders and then down below here, uh, we have USB uh, inputs, auxiliary inputs, and those go over to the Excite radio here, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And then um, below it, we have a USB charger. All right, moving up here to the left-hand panel, we have the parking brake. So when you push the parking brake in, that releases the park brake and uh, allows your service brakes to work. Once again, if you're going to park, you want to put it in neutral and pull that out, which releases the air pressure in there and uh, causes the brake to stay on. Next to that, we have the mirror control. So in the center is off, it makes these directional switches dead. We put it to the left. We can move the 
uh, electric portion of the exterior mirror up, down, or side to side. Same if we flip it over to the right hand side. And then once you're done making your adjustments, it's best to put it in the middle so that you can't bump these and move your mirrors by accident. Uh, right next to that, we have the red switch that's unmarked. That is the mirror heat switch. So in the electric portion of the mirrors, uh, there's a electric heating pad in there that will help de-ice, defrost the um, mirrors, exterior mirrors. Um, so then here we have the headlight switch. So this would be marker lights, the first position. Second position would be the headlights. And then uh, you can control your bright and dim here with the stock. Um, this would be the fog lights. And if the bright lights are on, the fog lights will be off. Um, you get an indicator on the uh, dash that uh, the brights are on or the fog lights are on if you have the switch on. This switch here is for automatic uh, headlights. Uh, and the, they will turn the brights on and off. You have the bright and dim switch here, and that controls the backlighting of all the switches here. So I can turn those down, or I can brighten them up. And that does not control the brightness of the glass dash. That setting is, is in the glass dash, but this one controls all the switches around the dash area. A dome light switch turns on and off the light on the ceiling right above the driver. And then <clears throat> we have a cancel and resume auto high beams. So if you have the auto high beams on and you want to cancel them, uh, you can flip this down to cancel. You'll get the, the indicator here at the cancel light. And then to resume normal function, you just press it forward. The ATC override switch is automatic trash control. Uh, and might need this sometime if you're in a slippery area and you need the wheels to spin. Um, it's a momentary switch, so you hold it down and then once you release it, uh, the ATC comes back on. Next here we have the window switch. So that will open and close the slider window here. Uh, next to the driver's area. It's power operated. Next we have the air horn switch. The air horn, um, if it's turned on when you push the center switch here on the steering wheel, you'll either get the air horn or you'll get the street horn. Um, if you have it on air horn, you'll actually get both. Uh, it'll be louder, and you'll get both the air horn and the street horn. All right, next, right down by the side of the steering wheel is a foot pedal. And if you re push that foot pedal in, it will release the steering wheel adjustments. So you can tilt it to your desired uh, level, and you can also either pull it out or push it in, the telescoping part, portion. And then once you release the foot pedal, it locks it in place. All right, here on the glass dash, we have the fuel gauge, the engine temperature, engine oil pressure, 
and we have two uh, air pressure gauges here for the front and rear and then this one here would be our DEF uh, fluid. Over here we have the RPM gauge. Uh, the indicator here at the bottom for reverse neutral or drive. Odometer and trip settings um, displayed here. You have your miles per hour or kilometers per hour gauge depending on whether you choose miles or kilometers uh, in the settings menu. Right up here in the middle you have your um, mobile eye uh, display and that's also available over here on the Excite screen. Then down below uh, is where your occlusion mitigation system will uh, appear. You have to be um, running in and going uh, fast enough for that to actually come on. Then in the center here, this section is customer friendly and you have a pod here on the steering wheel that controls those settings. So you can go to the home button at any time and then from there you can scroll through um, the other settings if you want to go into air leveling. Um, you can auto level on on the airbags themselves that will not put the jacks down it just uh, levels the airbags you can go down and with the menu and control the brightness this is where you would control the brightness of this screen here you could um, select brightness and then once you get into the menu there you can turn the brightness down you can always go back to home at any time and then <clears throat> you can get messages settings your trip you can set up your trip information reset that you can also get info and this is where you can get other uh, gauges to display like engine load, engine oil temp, um, your uh, boost. It'll kind of scroll through these. Transmission temp. Some of these are already displayed up here, but if you want to see it right in the center of your screen, you can, um, you can do that. You can also go down and get your tire pressure monitoring system and read the pressures on each tire. So that's a quick rundown of the, the center dash. And um, we'll move on over to the steering wheel. Um, these are the controls here for the center glass dash. Like I said, the home button, and then you can scroll through the menu, and the OK makes the selection, and then you can use the back buttons or the home button to navigate through the screen. Over here on this side, you have your phone uh, answer and decline or hang up. And these work when your phone is connected to the Excite radio. Then you have your wiper controls here. It's off, wash, and delay. So for your delay to work, you press it once. Then you wait however long you want the delay to last and then hit it again and that sets the time for the delay. 
off of course is off and then this button down here is for high low uh, on your wiper speed moving down here this would be headlight flash this would be marker light flash and so if they're on and you press this it will make them flash if they're off and you press either one of them, it will make it flash. So it does the opposite of whatever uh, setting you have it on. So these buttons here are controls for the dash radio. Source obviously um, allows you to scroll through the sources for the radio and you can also do that on the um, Excite radio itself also but this allows you to do that without taking your hands off the steering wheel and being distracted over here we have the turn signal stock so you can use the stock to turn the right or left turn signal on it also has the cruise control on it so you can turn the cruise control on and off right here and then push it in on the end to set the cruise it also turns the brights on and off by doing this and then right underneath it is a silver um, lever that you can pull out to turn the hazard flashers on once you are done with the hazard flashers, you want to cancel those, just turn the turn signal on in either direction and it will release that. On the, on the pod here on the right, there are a couple of buttons here. Uh, the bottom one here will move the pedals in or out for your comfort. And then the top one here is the comfort drive steering effort and it will display when you move this here it will display onto the dash and you'll see your settings there anywhere from five to one and the higher the number the more firm the steer is the lower the number the easier it is to turn so going down the road uh, your comfort level may be up here in the three, four, five range. And then when you um, get to where you're going to be parking, backing up, uh, maneuvering the coach, you may want this uh, lowered down. It's uh, all a personal preference thing. So just allows easy adjustability of that right here without going through the menu. You can also do it through the glass dash menu here, but it takes a little longer to get there. Okay, so we'll look at the Excite radio here. Uh, once again, you can do these controls from the steering wheel or here on the radio itself. Uh, it is a touch screen. You can touch the menu, select what source you want, radio media center, uh, Sirius XM, uh, if you want Sirius XM, uh, you'll have to uh, subscribe to that. Uh, Bluetooth, be like where you'd Bluetooth your phone. Uh, HDMI, if you had a HDMI device you wanted to plug in or auxiliary, uh, you could plug your phone in uh, that way over here uh, with this auxiliary port on the left. Camera control. Uh, is an important one that you'll want to know how to use. Um, so if you hit cam right here or camera control on the menu, either one will pull up the camera menu. The cameras display over here on this side and then this allows you to do the selection of what camera you want to see. So if you wanted to see the front camera, you would do that. If you wanted to see the left turn signal camera, you do that side of the coach on the left, side of the coach on the right, the right hand turn signal, or the rear view camera. 
on your rear camera, you have three selection modes. The center one here would be the normal mode. Uh, this one here with the angle coming down closer to the coach would be like when you're backing up, you want to see your hitch. And then this one right here would be a more distant uh, picture in the rear. Uh, like if you wanted to see your tow vehicle or possibly behind your tow vehicle um, in the horizon. Okay, then <clears throat> over here on these selections, you have a, uh, this is part of your uh, surround cameras. So you can choose different settings here on these and see different um, different views. Or you can do that one and see all the way around the coach. So. On this screen, the camera screen here, uh, you can go in here to your settings and, and dim the screen if it's too bright for you. You can turn it on to auto. Uh, you can also control uh, contrast if you want to brighten it up a little bit and then uh, you can also control the color you can change the color hues a little bit once again total preference of settings there all right uh, over here on the switch panel you have your battery boost switch and you can boost from your house or your chassis battery. Uh, this is a dual position switch. Um, so whichever battery is low or dead, you can uh, go the opposite way and boost that, um, that battery, hopefully allowing you to get your coach started um, or your generator started. Um, this switch here is the heavy tow on and off. So forward is off, back is on, and that would light up if I had the key in the on position. There you go. Um, and what this does is it just changes the amount of uh, pressure that's on the tag axle to help distribute distribute the tongue weight of the, of a trailer. Uh, front fan, high, medium, and low is um, this Oasis convector fan down here. And so if you had the heat on in here and through the silver leaf, system and it was operating blowing out heat here you could you could turn that uh, fan off if you were too warm or you could put it on low or high the overhead fan switch is the fan up in the overhead that helps blow air around the windshield area and then the switch right next to it, high, medium, and low, is for the overhead fans. And then it allows you to put that on high, medium, or low. Um, those two switches in combination with each other uh, help defrost and uh, keep the windshield clear. The next button over is Gen Start and Preheat. So... When you first press this, it's going to flash and it's going to start preheating. And once the glow plugs get warm, the generator will start. Then once it's started, once you're done uh, using it, you press the stop button and it will shut the generator off. Entrance door lock or ENTRY lock is just entry door lock. So again toggle this between locked and unlocked. Next over we have 
the visor and shade switches. So these control the um, shades and visors uh, over here in the passenger side in the front windshield. The shade is actually this front blackout shade. One thing to note on all these that are controlled here by this, these controls here, if the key is on, they will only come down halfway. If they're already down, they will run up. But if you try to bring them back down, they, will, they won't come down. If you turn the key off, they'll run all the way down to their lowest setting. It's a safety feature so that they can't be lowered to obstruct uh, the driving view of the driver. Below that, we have the dash HVAC controls. So as long as this is at least on setting one and the keys on you'll hear the blower come on uh, this button here is for the air conditioner compressor so you can turn that on and off and then this one is for air recycling so you can either recycle the air from inside the coach uh, back through the dash heat and AC system. Or if you have it off, it will suck in fresh air from the outside. So on warm, muggy days, it's best to recycle it, recirculate the air because you won't be sucking in that warm, moist air from the outside and try to, to cool it down. So this is your temperature setting. So obviously blue all the way over here is the coldest, all the way over here in the red is the hottest. And then this selector selects where the air is going to come out of. So floor, floor and mid dash area, um, Floor, floor only, uh, defrost and floor, and all defrost. Uh, there are a couple of vents, one on each side, that no matter what setting you have it on, you're going to get a little air out of. Um, its purpose is to help keep the side windows clean. Below that, we have a couple of storage drawers. All right, we'll start up here in the overheads now. So both these doors here, just storage areas. We'll go to this one here. It's kind of the main control center. Uh, here you have your Xantrux solar controller. Um, you can turn it on and off. You can also see your voltages uh, coming from the solar panel. And um, there's a menu here you can go through uh, the different settings here. Next, we have our WineGuard TV antenna. So if you're going to watch over-the-air TV, you want to have this powered on. If you're going to watch cable TV, if uh, the park you go to has cable TV, you want to plug it in. We'll show you where to plug that in on the outside of the coach. Uh, in the compartment and uh, if you if you have that you want to turn this to the off position that will allow cable to come through this and go to the TV otherwise it cuts the cable signal off if this is turned on but once you turn this on it'll go through a scan it will look for local channels um, we're inside of a building today, 
doing this video, so it's not going to find any channels. Um, and then once it found the channels, these two buttons here allow you to turn for fine tuning. This button here is the search button. Once you go to a new location, if this has been on, you'll want to research the new location. It'll find the best um, position to put the antenna in to receive the most channels. This uh, control here is for the dryer awnings. And so you can touch it here and it'll say what channel you're on, channel one, channel two, channel three, or channel zero. Channel zero will run all three awnings out at the same time or in. Channel one will be the top front main on patio awning channel two will be the rear main patio awning and channel three will be the entry door awning so you can choose between those uh use your in or out buttons and at any point if you want to stop just hit the stop button you also have a light uh button here which will turn the light on and off on the selected awning if you select channel zero it will turn them all on at the same time you also have lock and unlock buttons here um, this is you can lock the this touchpad so that um, can't be in a, inadvertently um, operated uh, the think that's really uh, important on the handheld remote depending on where you store it uh, we'll go over the handheld remote here shortly but it is uh, just a smaller more sleek version of the same layout here okay moving on over um, this particular coach has uh, exterior window awnings so uh, those are manually controlled right here you can run them in and out driver security light momentary contact switch uh, and passenger security lights so they just turn the uh, lights on that are on the side of the coach Driver's privacy drape, front privacy drape, door privacy drape, and passenger privacy drape. These are all these uh, blackout drapes right here that you see in the cockpit area. Uh, this just allows you to run those up and down. Uh, the switch here is driver's side slide out. Um, these are HWH uh, slide outs in the front of the coach and so when you run those number one you want to be on airbags you want the coach to be aired up so what you would do is um, if you just got to the campsite you know that the coach is already aired up because um, you've been driving it if you've been parked and you're getting ready to leave, you would want to start the coach, retract the jacks, make sure it says it's in travel mode over here on the jack pad. And you would also want to make sure that your air gauges are up. They'll be up close to about 130, 140 pounds when they're full probably. We'll see where it kicks off here. You can see right here we have a warning here. We're not at ride height. We um, do want to make sure that we're aired up and at ride height. So we're still building air pressure. And you can see that the light just went off on the dash there, um, indicating that we are 
now at right height. So that's how we want to be before we run the slide out rooms. Once we've got to that point, you can shut the coach off if you want. But these switches, the way you want to run the rooms, we're going to go ahead and run this one in just as a demonstration. First of all, we want to make sure that the path of travel inside the coach is not inhibited in any way, nothing in the way. And then also on the outside of the coach, we want to make sure that uh, if we're parked around trees uh, and stuff that there's nothing that's fallen uh, on this slide out topper or uh, underneath the slide out topper. Uh, this is especially true if you uh, are in a snowy winter condition. Make sure that there's no snow or ice buildup on there. And then you push this button and hold it. The slide room will come in. You want to make sure that the seats are forward out of the way. And you'll hold this switch until the room travels completely in stops and then you get that sound there it, it will actually shut off on its own the same with running the coach out we want to be on airbags we want to check the reveal outside and we'll show you how to do that here in a little bit and then we'll want to make sure that there's nothing in the way on the outside or the inside nothing's fallen behind where the path of the slide out is going to run we'll push the out button and hold it until the slide room travels completely out and lowers into place and then the pump shuts off on its own. So we're traveling out. Once it travels all the way out, it goes into a lowering sequence here. It's uh, lowering down. It's now lowered all the way down. And then the pump just shut off on its own. That's when you release the switch. Exterior LEDs. Um, these would be the LEDs that would be underneath the slide out. Or um, select coaches have them also by the mud flap in different areas. So. That would be turning on in your exterior LEDs. Exterior entrance step. This would be your step override switch. So uh, if your entrance step um, switch is in this on, position each time that you open and close the step it will go in and out if you turn this switch off um, once you open the door the step will go out once it's been ex once it's extended and you shut the door it will stay out just a way for you to be at your campsite and the step not operate every time you go in and out the door. Uh, next here we have Wi-Fi router uh, on off switch. So this just allow, allows you to turn the Wi-Fi router off uh, when either not in use or uh, storage or you just don't want anybody else to be able to uh, see your Wi-Fi router, you can turn that off. Your Wi-Fi router is located up here at the top. There's a, a setup instructions for that in your owner's manual. Um, and you'll be able to see, if you're on your device, uh, you'll be able to see the Wi-Fi router. It will be named Newmar, and then the last four digits of your coach. You have some outlets up here. 
that can be used for um, plugging in other things. And right up here at the top, you have a conduit uh, prep and a conduit and toolbolt wiring for the satellite prep right up there. So <clears throat> if you were going to put a satellite dish on the roof, you would use that to be able to pull your wire between the roof and here. This port here is not for customer use. This is uh, just a port that gets a technician into the uh, server relief system. We have the um, Samsung TV, front overhead TV, um, some storage in this cabinet here. <clears throat> we have some controls. Uh, these are Gerard awning controls. These two would be your main awnings, and this one would be your door awning. Uh, they are they are plugged in here. They do need 120 volt to operate. Um, you'll see the LED lights if they're on, and then also uh, one thing to note is if you're remotes, your handheld, or you're the one in the overhead cabinet that we just looked at wouldn't work. Uh, there are three buttons here on the side of each one of these, and that's extend, retract, and stop. So they can manually be operated from the remote itself. We'll take a look here at the passenger side console. So Located right as you come in the entry door to the side here, we have the battery disconnect. So if you turn this off, uh, all the lights and stuff in the coach will go out. Um, it will turn most things off in the coach. Might be a, still a few memories or something that uh, would still work. And then you have... Uh, the cargo lock unlock button. So you can just toggle this between lock and unlock. Up here we have a lighted cup holder. And then this screen right here be called your buddy screen. You can loosen these uh, this arm up and adjust this for use for the passenger, however they like it. I'm gonna kind of move it out of the way here so we can see these other switches. So this, this screen just mirrors the Excite radio. So you can do pretty much anything on this screen that you can do on the Excite radio. Uh, just the passenger can do it and help you out, including navigation. So we have the patio light switch, turns the patio light on and off right outside the entry door. Uh, once again, you have the visor switch here, um, and that would be the screen uh, portion of the blind here. We'll move that up and down. Uh, the step cover, uh, let me step out of the step well here and I'll show you how that works. So the step cover switch will extend the step cover to cover up the step well. And then once it's been extended and it comes up into position where it's level, uh, you can walk on this and it allows the passenger to uh, get in and out of the seat without having to deal with the steps. When you're at your location, and you're ready to go in and out of the coach, you can simply press the step switch cover button the opposite way. It will retract and store back in and in the floor. Uh, the ceiling light switch, this will control the ceiling lights, turn them on and off, it just toggles them on and off. Uh, if they're on, it'll turn them off. If they're off, it'll turn them on and that controls the lights in the main cabin area. 
the map light switch <clears throat> turns on the light right above the passenger. Right beside that, we have a, a wireless charger. You can take a phone and lay it on the charger, and if it's compatible um, and your cover is compatible, it will come on and charge the phone or whatever device has the wireless charging capability. Down below that, at the bottom, we have the fire extinguisher. If you'd ever need that, uh, release is, is down there and it can be pulled out. Right beside the passenger seat, there is a table that can be pulled forward, lifted up, rotated down, and then you have a uh, table there, tabletop. To store it, just rotate it back down and pull it backwards. It stores out of the way. Okay, we're going to take a look at the passenger seat here. To operate the passenger seat, adjust it. You can push this forward or backwards. You can also twist this switch, which will lower or raise the seat portion. This switch here will change the position of the back forward and backwards. This switch here will open and close the footrest. Then on this side we have, <clears throat> I'll turn the seat around here. So we have a, a lever here that you can release and it will allow the seat to swivel. You want to pull the table forward to this position and then you can start to rotate this around. You may have to push the seat forward or backward depending on where you have it adjusted. But once you have it around here, you can move the table back out of the way. So this was the release for the swivel. Then this switch here is for the seat heat. And it's um, basically off and low and high on the heat and then this switch here is the lumbar support so you can adjust the lumbar uh, support in or out on your back the <clears throat> armrest come down right here in the end there is a little adjustment that you can pull up a lever with your finger you can position the armrest where you want it, release it, and then it will stay in that position. So this is one of those adjustments that is up to the customer where they want it. Once you're done with the armrest and you don't want it there in your way you can just push it back once you are done with the seat being around towards the living room once again you'll want to pull this table forward before you rotate it around you can rotate it around and it will click lock into position you can then push your seat your table back into place so the driver's seat works just like the passenger seat we showed you. Um, this switch here for the footrest, if your if you, coach's park brake is released, so basically 
the thought is you would have the key on the park brake released. Um, you would be driving. At that point, it will not let you deploy the uh, footrest. So once you release the park brake, it will allow you to deploy the footrest. Of course, you don't want to deploy it in the forward position. You would want to turn, rotate the seat around. Um, so you can rotate the seat around once again. When you go to rotate it, you may have to um, put the move the seat position forward. You may have to put the armrest down, and you may have to uh, put the steering wheel forward to get it to rotate around to the living area. But that would be the position where you'd most likely want to be using the uh, footrest. When you are done with it in that position, you can just rotate it back around, move it backwards a little bit, click it back into place. Now you're locked back in to the straightforward position, ready to drive. Start over here with the living portion of the coach, just uh, behind the passenger seat. Uh, there's a series of labels here, some instructions and warnings about the uh, slide out and um, making sure your seats are forward, not letting children operate the slide outs and a few other miscellaneous uh, uh, rules, along with uh, that your awning should be retracted during uh, accumulating rains. Pulling water on the uh, awning can cause damage and it is not covered by warranty. Okay, we'll look at the KIB <clears throat> switch control panels. So we have here, we're in the lighting mode. So we can turn the lights on and off and we can select what area we want to do that in and we can either turn them on or we can slide that for dim dimming or we can turn them off we can go into the menu here and we can select what we want to control um, i'm going to just for video purposes, I'm going to turn the display brightness down a little bit. So we have lighting, shades, fans, systems, monitor panel, and display brightness. So I just showed you display brightness. The lighting control, you just we just seen. Uh, go back to your home button. The shades, you can... So it gives you areas, depending on where the switch is located, on what shades or lights can be operated. I'm going to go over this switch panel, and then we're going to kind of skip over the rest of them in the coach, because they operate the same way. Uh, just the selections of uh, shades and, and uh, lights may vary a little bit from panel to panel. So fans, this one here allows you to turn your fans on and off or turn your rain sensor override on and off and then select uh, what setting you want. Uh, it allows you to go from the kitchen, master bath, or storeroom. So there's three fantastic fans in the coach. So if we go to kitchen one, you can turn it on and off from here. And then once you've turned it on, your uh, display turns red when it's on. And then the selection of high, medium, or low, whichever one you have selected, turns red as well. Uh, in the event that you would have moisture on the fan and it wouldn't want to come on because of the rain sensor, um, 
this can sometimes happen in the bathroom where showers have been ran or whatnot. Um, or it's been raining, but it stopped, and now you want to open the fans up. You can turn the rain override sensor um, on. And so this bypasses the rain sensor. So as long as that's turned on, that's red, the rain sensor overrides red. It, if it starts raining, it will not sh automatically shut the uh, fan for you. If it's off like this and it starts to rain, once the sensor gets moisture on it, enough moisture on it, it will sense that and it will shut the fan down automatically. That operates the same in each of the other fans as well. Systems. <clears throat> The systems will vary just a little bit um, depending on the location. Um, but you can turn the water pump on and off or you can use this to lift the, the operate the TV lift up or down. <clears throat> you can also view your monitor panel from any of these switches by choosing the monitor panel option. So <clears throat> it will show you the voltage on like one and like two. It also shows you your house um, <clears throat> battery and chassis battery voltages. And then your fresh gray and black tank uh, levels. If you at any time forget how to use this panel there's an eye here you can touch the eye and then you can receive operating instructions for any of the following items here lighting shades fans systems monitor panel or window awnings so if you go in we'll just select lighting for instance it will tell you here that it'll turn red when it's on and then you can go to the next page here and it will tell you how to use the dimmer portion of it. That's the overview on the KIB switch panels. All right, just below the KIB switch, we have a 120 volt outlet with a couple of USB charge ports. Uh, right behind the sofa, we have another uh, outlet with USB charge ports. Another switch panel operates the same way as the one I just showed you. Um, right here, you have this cover here. That is the TV and the TV lift system is underneath there. So we'll um, operate that here from the screen. And we can do this as well from over at the theater seating the touch panels over there so you go to systems and tv lift up touch it once it will go into its lift sequence and it will stop when it reaches the travel settings while that's going up the cabinets above the TV or storage. This cabinet here would be the AV cabinet. And this is where you'd have your satellite uh, hookup and your, um, if you had a DVD player or a Blu-ray Blu player or uh, a satellite, that you wanted to connect to the TV via HDMI. Those connections are here. <clears throat> There's also um, some outlets there for your use. Above that, we have the Bose speaker. 
Um, the Bose speaker is hooked to the main TV. Uh, you can get this, you can select from the Bose remote. You can use that and select if you want the TV output or not, or you can Bluetooth your phone to that and listen to music over the uh, Bose speaker as well. <clears throat> Since this AV cabinet is a uh, not a glass door, there is a IR repeater receiver up here. So <clears throat> if you have components in there that you want the remote to work on instead of opening the door every time to get them to work, uh, you can hook up uh, <clears throat> the eyes here. They're, they're bundled up back here, but you'll have to place them on whatever device that you would put into this cabinet in the correct spot. And then uh, this IO repeater would transfer the signal from here in there to that component. Uh, <clears throat> here we just have more storage space. And then we'll look at the setup here for watching the air TV. So you can turn your TV on and you'll need to do this each time you go to a different location around the country. So you'll go down, you'll scroll over and get in here and go, go down to your settings menu. You'll select your settings menu. You'll scroll over in your settings menu to all settings. You'll select all settings. Once you get into this menu, you'll want to go down to broadcasting and make the selection there and auto programs what you want. So you'll select auto program and then you'll select start. At this point, it's going to give you a choice between both air and cable. The way that the um, cable and air TV is routed and, and is sent to the TVs. <clears throat> you can not do both. You cannot sl select both and actually program air and cable at the same time. You'll have to program them individually. Um, so if you want to do air, you need to make sure that this line guard TV antenna is turned on, like we said earlier when we were in the front overhead cabinet. Once you've made sure that your line guard TV antenna booster and is on in the uh, front overhead for your Razor antenna, then you'll want to come here and you'll make the selection for air and it'll start scanning for channels. Once again, today we're inside the building, so it's not going to pick up any channels, but this is how you would scan for your channels. It would display how many it found there below. And once it was finished, um, you could then go and watch the TV channels in that local area. So <clears throat> since it's not going to find any, we're going to um, stop that. If you wanted to scan again, you could go over here to scan again. Um, We're going to go back to the menu again, and I'll show you. Okay, we're going to do auto program. 
And then this time, if we were going to scan for cable channels, we would make sure that this TV antenna is turned off. We would make sure our cable is plugged in on the outside at the compartment, where we'll show you when we're doing the outside walk around. Make sure that's hooked up, and then we would select cable, and then select that, and it would search then for a cable channels. Same scenario. I'm going to stop this one because we're not hooked up to cable, so it's not going to find any channels. That gives you a brief rundown of how you would search for your air or cable channels at each campsite you go to. When you're done, anytime that you're done with your TV or you're going to travel, uh, you want to travel with this TV in the lowered position. and it will shut off when it reaches its lower limit. We'll look real quickly here at how to set the sofa up into a bed if you want to use it for a bed. Remove the cushions. <clears throat> the backs are Velcroed on. Take those and move them out of your way. Right here at the back, there's a strap. You reach down and grab that, pull up on it. That comes open and the legs come down. And then come back here and rotate the back down. Gives you your sleeping surface. Once you're done with it, you want to make it back into a bed, just reverse that. Or once you want to make it back into a sofa, just reverse that. Flip the back, back up, grab this strap, pull up and lower this back down into place. The strap back down out of your way. Grab your back cushions. and Velcro them back in place. We'll do a quick demonstration here on your theater seating. So here in the center, there is a um, lid you can open. There's a drawer down here that you can slide. It's great for remotes and stuff like that. There's also a little bit of additional storage below there. Then you have the cup holders. Uh, they are lighted. You can turn the lights on and off. And then it also has your switches here um, to operate the footrest. And as your footrest comes up, it will also recline at the same time. So you kind of lay all the way back. Or the opposite button will <clears throat> retract that. Out here at this edge, there is a little slider door that you can open, and there's a USB charge port there as well. Don't want the light on, you can just simply turn it off. All right, we'll take a look at the kitchen. So these are just storage cabinets here. This particular cabinet here does have an outlet in it and it's where the microwave is plugged into. So, And then there's a series of important 
um, notices and along with your paint codes and uh, there's some coach weight information on the sticker here as well there is a drawer that will slide in and out there as well and then the last one here is a uh, storage with adjustable shelving coming back over this way uh, there's a set of drawers here that can be open and closed as well as right up here at the top underneath the countertop there's a button that can be pushed this can be pulled out gives you a little more countertop room and once again those are just storage drawers when you get ready to put this back away for travel just simply come up against it there give it a little bump it will make the magnets release and then you'll want to close it till it latches in place up here on the stove we have stove covers with cutting boards on the back side we have a true induction cooktop this cooktop can be turned on right here with the power buttons their touch panel and then you can adjust the um, the amount of heat that's going in here. Uh, there is a sticker here that tells you about the cookware that's needed for this. They have to be uh, induction compatible, which basically means they have to have an iron core in them or um, be magnetic. Uh, if it does not see a pan on here, when you turn it on, it will automatically shut back off. So if you were to put like a, a solid aluminum pan on here, it would not recognize that. Um, however, a aluminum clad pad pan that a magnet will hold to the bottom of it, uh, it should recognize that as a pan and um, operate just fine. If you would like to ever remove this and cook away from the kitchen, uh, like outside at a picnic table or something like that, you can do that. Just simply pick it up, unplug it, and then once you're done, you can bring it back in here and put it back in place. Uh, once you're done cooking, you can put these back on once the cooktop is cool. Uh, below that, we have some more storage drawers. When we ship the coach, this particular drawer is full of um, remotes and other accessories for the coach. Uh, this packet of stuff here is, uh, you got a HDMI cable and a um, optical audio cable. If you need it to hook something up. This headset is for setting up the um, Bose system, which was pre-done pre in your coach, but if it was ever have to be replaced, you might need it again. So they ship it with it. In this uh, container here, you got the wrench here for the hubs on your uh, wheels. You also have the air fitting that goes in the back by the hitch if you need to connect anything with that it's the mating coupling and then a little information here on your diamond shield and how to take care of that 
um, extra set of keys, spare batteries for the remote, uh, for the key fob remote. Your Gerard awning control. Two different Bose speaker remotes. Uh, this one would be the main Bose speaker there for the main TV. This would be the remote for the Bose speaker in the outside entertainment center. Then you have for Samsung TV remotes and a Sofa Baton Universal uh, remote. This would be your filter wrench for your whole house filter. We'll show you that on the outside of the coach and the water compartment when we get there. This would be the flagpole bracket. So, um, we can show you that on the outside of the coach as well. Have a couple of accessories here that come with the Gerard awnings. This one here is used to uh, adjust the in and out stop settings, and then this rod here if we were to take this out it's a long hex rod that can be used for manual retraction of the dryer awnings in case of a failure have a drain plug that goes in the water compartment along with the dryer awning accessories they do provide a uh, usb with their operator and um, with their owner operator manual on it and then we do have a tool here that we'll show you how it's used right here so <clears throat> the Rooftop air conditioner heat pumps are located in this area, and there's another one back in the bedroom area. And there, you can use this tool to go in here and pull that down. Once you pull it down, <clears throat> you'll see Right over here is the discharge air ports. That's for the air coming from the air conditioning unit that's been either air conditioned or heated, and it's pushing it down into the coach. On this side, these have a filter on them. These filters need to be cleaned fairly often um, to make sure you have good airflow to the AC units. They can be, these can just be pulled down. These can be washed, warm soapy water, and uh, once they're dry, you can just put them back on here. Simply put them back up here and press right in the middle. They'll latch back in place. So in this area here, there's a series of uh, five of those. You know, each one will need to be clean. In the also in the back bedroom, there's another one of these panels that's smaller, and there's also some in there that will need to be cleaned as well. So when you're done with these, you can simply just push these back up, and they're magnetic. Just make sure that you go all the way down so that all the magnets hold it in place. Now we're at our kitchen sink. There's covers that can be removed here. Expose the sink. If you want to store these covers out of your way, you can open this cabinet here and along the side of the trash can over to the left hand side is an area 
uh, to store these. The faucet itself has a sprayer knob, uh, switch here that you can use regular or a sprayer. Of course, like any other faucet, you would turn this on and off and adjust the temperature on it. Down below here, you have the slider drawer here for the trash can. And we have another one here that can be used as well. Right below the sink, this is a little tip out. Great for sponges and scouring pads and whatnot. Right beside here, we have a little storage area with a, another drawer. And once again, you can either store these for travel on the sink itself or down beside the trash can. Have another KIB panel here on the side. Once again, it operates the same way as the one we talked about earlier. Uh, located in the coach is a black bag. Black bag contains the Newmar owner's manual. It contains um, several pamphlets and Warranties for different appliances and uh, electrical things, electrical plumbing, heating, exterior. Should go over this information, read it, turn in any warranties that um, are in there for you to fill out. All right, we'll look at the dinette area here now. So move the seat chair out of the way. So <clears throat> this table set up here can be used like that, or you can pull it out. like that and rotate it around and then slide it back in there. That sets up a table like that. You have storage areas on both sides. And then another storage area underneath the table itself. So with the table <clears throat> set up in this position, you can use the the chairs and then underneath the bed is a couple of foldable chairs that you can also use um, to set as many as four people at the table. When you're done using the tables and the extra seats they can be stored underneath the bed And this table can be rotated back around. We'll need to do that for the travel. So that the table doesn't run into the other slide out.
And for these chairs here, they travel here. You can rotate them around to set at the table sideways. All right, we'll look at the Whirlpool refrigerator here. Do a brief rundown on it. So right now, the doors and the freezer will not open. If you slide this lock forward, then they will open. So this unit has an ice maker and the ice maker can be turned on by leaving the bell arm in the down position. If you want to turn the ice maker off, you simply reach back there, grab the bell arm and lift up on it. And that will turn the ice maker off. Um, they do come with a water filtration on this model. So the water filter goes right here. So you can open that door and it will only go in one way um, and, and latch in place. So you can push the filter in. And once it goes all the way in, I'm not going to install it because this one still has some winterizing fluid in it. But you would push it all the way in and then close the door. <clears throat> in the back, there's also a a fresh flow filter that can be changed back there. See your um, Whirlpool manual for the recommendations on how often you change those. Anytime you go to travel, you'll want to close, make sure that the freezer and refrigerator doors are closed and you'll want to flip this lock back towards the back and double check that each door is locked. If not, the doors may open during travel and you may have a mess. Okay, so if you wanna put this refrigerator in storage, you would want to, of course, clean it out and have it open for a while, get all the moisture and stuff out of it, and you would push and hold these outside buttons for a minimum of three seconds, and then you'll see the cooling off uh, letters come up. You can also turn the cooling back on if you take it out of storage by doing the same thing, press and hold it for three seconds at least and then it will come back on and it will turn the compressor back on. There's also some settings here for uh, water filter reset and whatnot, air filter reset. So um, you have to press and hold those for like three seconds a piece also to reset them. Uh, you can also go through the menu there and uh, set the settings of how cool you want the upper portion and the lower portion of the freezer. Beside the refrigerator, we have a pantry. Uh, down here, these dividers can be pulled out and uh, put in different positions based on what kind of uh, pans or muffin tins or anything else that you wanted to store in there. So, kind of a nice feature. And then these drawers are locked when you open it. You have to push them in to release them, and then you can are able to pull them out. So to lock them, you push them all the way, all the way in until you hear them click and then they're locked in place they won't open during travel so push them to reopen them this does have a magnetic switch down here that turns the pantry light on and off so once you close the doors the pantry light will go off
automatically. All right, we're going to look at the silver leaf screen here. So right now what we have up is the home screen. So what you see here on the home screen is the date, the temperature, and the time. At the top, we have refresh gray and black tank readings or below that. Then below that, your house and chassis battery voltages. And this right here showing bridged would be <clears throat> the state of your charge bridge. So if it's bridged, it will display that it's bridged. That means uh, the house and chassis battery banks are both being charged by the shore power. We're connected to shore power here. Uh, if genset was lit up instead of shore power, that would mean the generator is supplying power. And then we are showing on shore power what leg one and two voltage is and the amperage draw on each of those legs. <clears throat> on the AC power screen, uh, once again, uh, it will show you what the shore power is and what the voltages and amperages on leg one and two are, as well as uh, the frequency of the voltage coming in. <clears throat> um, max charger draw 30 amp um, that is, is showing that it's set for 30 amp max from the charger draw um, <clears throat> inverter standby means the inverter is on but it's not needed right now because shore power is is on if we were to turn the inverter off it would show off and uh, anytime you're plugged in and it's on it will be in standby okay um, the button here load shed so takes you into another set of screens here it shows us right now that we're 50 amp dual phase uh, and it shows the leg currents here. If we were going to go into view load status, this would show us if anything is shed. Um, we automatically know that nothing is shed on 50 amps, so they all should read OK, which they do. It means that power is being supplied to all of those um, areas, except for the engine heater, and that's not turned on but if we went back here and we turned the block heater on and we went back to this menu um, it would show now the engine heater is on as well okay <clears throat> This goes through a few more pages here of, of things related to the load shedding. And about the only thing that you may need to do, we don't recommend you connecting to anything under 30 amps, but if you did, you would want to come in here and turn this down to whatever you're plugged in to help you keep from blowing that breaker. It defaults to 30 amps. Back here. Go into the DC power screen. DC power is showing us right now that the inverter, the charger from the inverter, is float charging the batteries at 38 amps. Uh, and the arrow is going into the batteries. That means it's putting energy into the batteries. If this charger was not there and the arrows were going the other way, 
and the inverter would be taking power out of the batteries. So it's just a visual indicator of, and then it would also show you how many amps that it's removing from the batteries. Uh, settings here, charger on. So you can turn the charger on or off. Um, actually, right here, it takes you to this, so you can, the charger is enabled. And if you change that, it would be disabled. Um, you would go back and you wouldn't see any charge um, coming from the charger and it shows disabled there and it gives you a visual uh, indicator that you would want to go back in here and uh, turn the charger on. When the charger first comes on it will go into a bolt charge first, then it will go into an absorption charge, and then into a float charge. Okay. On the generator screen, you can manually start and stop the generator, or you can uh, <clears throat> turn on the auto gen start, and like right now, it's telling us that it's locked out. So I know I started the generator manually earlier. That will automatically lock out the uh, AGS if it was enabled. So I can clear the locks and, and go to the AGS settings and Scroll down through here, and I can enable or disable, um, like the living room, kitchen, or in this screen, the bed, um, AC units to start the generator, or the battery auto charger. I can enable that instead of disabling it. <clears throat> so now you can see here <clears throat> that AGS is enabled and it's living room, kitchen or bedroom will um, is enabled to turn the auto gen start system on based on a demand for heat from the um, AC heat pumps or air conditioning from the air conditioner. Go to the water screen. On the water screen, once again, you get your fresh gray black tank readouts, as well as a switch to turn on the water pump on and off. And you can also uh, enable the autofill. So you can turn the autofill off or you can turn it on um, and ready, or you can hit top off. Top off will fill it instantly instead of waiting for it to get to the preset um, turn on point. Climate. <clears throat> when you go to climate, in the all zone setting, this would set the living room, bath, kitchen, bedroom, all to the same setting. You can do them individually by clicking on each room. Um, however, the all zone screen is the only screen that the Oasis button will be at. In the Oasis button, this is where you'll turn your burner on and off right here, on or off, and your electric element one and two, you can turn those on and off here as well. For maximum 
heat, ca heat and hot water capability, I recommend that you keep your electric elements on and your burner on as well. And then <clears throat> your heat source to both on. That will be able to provide the most hot water and coach heating uh, possible by the OASIS system. <clears throat> if you're in a warm climate, you're not using heat at all, and you like to take quick showers, you might be able to uh, turn the electric elements on and get by with it uh, for showers, but you're likely to run out of hot water before you're done with your uh, shower if you don't have the burner turned on. So back into the <clears throat> all climates uh, screen. You can choose, like I said, each bedroom, and you can set those uh, individually or in the all screen. You um, simply go in here and you set the temperature that you want here, and then you choose whether you want heat, cool, or auto. So you go into the heating menu, the cooling menu or the auto menu. Auto menu will choose heat or cool, uh, either one based on the temperature of the coach. Day, night, return, away, and hold. Uh, if you want to set the temperature and you want it to hold at that temperature, no matter if it's day, night, or whether you're at the coach or not, you put it on hold. It'll just maintain that temperature. Uh, day and night, there are settings that you can go in and set up in the menu. You can have separate temperatures for the day, separate temperatures for the night, or um, you can uh, go in and set away, and you can set up uh, temperature settings for when you're away. When you get back, you can hit return then, and it will go back to the daytime settings based on the time or the nighttime settings. Myself, I like to hold. I like to just set my temperature and it be where I want it. Black heater. Black heater uh, screen this gives you the button to turn the black heater on and off. Um, <clears throat> there's a plug in the rear engine compartment that needs to be plugged in for the black heater to actually work. This just turns on the power to that outlet. So if you leave it plugged in, you turn it on and off here, it will turn the black heater on and off. If you Unplug it back there. You can turn this on um, and it will just supply power to that outlet and block heater will never work. The floor heat. So the floor heat screen allows you to control the front, rear, or mid area floor heats. And you can control those by the up and down arrows here. Or you can just grab the slider bars and uh, turn them up or down as you wish. There is a setting here called store. Store is uh, basically the same as off. Um, it doesn't allow the system to work when it's on store. Floor heat, the vent fans. <clears throat> the vent fans are operate the same way as what I showed you on the KIB screens earlier. Um, you can control the kitchen, master bath, or storeroom. Once you hit the button for which zone you want, it pulls up the screen and you can turn it on and off 
you can override the rain sensor and you can select between high, medium, and low for each area. Door locks. <clears throat> the door lock screen allows you to toggle the entry door locked and unlocked or the cargo doors locked and unlocked. The shade and TV lift screen <laughs> allows you to control shades in the selected room. So over here, you can select living room, kitchen, bedroom, or bath. And then based on which one selection you make, the options change on which shade you can run. So it gives you the option to run the days or the night shades. Uh, and then as well as down here, the TV lift up and down. The light screens are set up very similar to the shades screen. Uh, you choose your bedroom, uh, living room, kitchen, which room you're wanting to do, or the exterior of the coach, and that changes the selections here based on what area you select. So once you select an area, it lets you uh, turn the lights on and off. Uh, over here to the side, you have the courtesy lights or the lights, all lights on and off uh, buttons as well. You go to the secure uh, exterior. It will allow you to control the driver or passenger security lights. Works the same as the toggle switches up in the front overhead cabinet. Um, either you can turn them on or off. Select which one you want to turn on or off, and then you can turn it on and off down here. Uh, the all lights off button will turn all the lights in the coach off. The all lights on button will turn most of the lights on in the coach. Um, there are some switch panels that have lights that are not on the all lights on. However, they are on the all lights off. In the settings menu, you have a pages here of what you can go through and look at. Uh, Autofill configuration, tablet Wi-Fi settings, entry key fob status, system component list, nest network diagnostics, monitor diagnostics, tank fill configuration, view AC power history, customize and monitor, monitor configuration, climate screen configuration, uh, miscellaneous settings, view logo, and view clock. And then there's one more, uh, test touch screen and reboot. Okay. All these things are already set up for you when you get it. The one thing that you may want to do, and this is a personal preference, in miscellaneous settings, there's an option here for time zone handling, and it's automatic or manual. If you leave it in automatic, the time on your screen will change based on the GPS location. If you want to turn it off and put it on manual, when you go into the clock, set the clock screen, it will give you arrows here so that you can make manual adjustments. If you go back in here and you turn this to automatic and you go back to the set the clock screen, these 
arrows will go away and it will say auto down here and it will not allow you to adjust the time. So once again, personal preference thing, whether you want it based on GPS uh, location or you want to manually set it. I would say most of the other settings uh, in here, you don't need to touch unless you're directed to do so uh, by someone at Numar or Serverleaf if you're having an issue. Uh, and then this button here that looks like a light bulb allows you to turn the screen brightness um, to high, medium, low, or off. If it's off, you can touch the screen and it'll come back on. All right, here in the half bath, we have the KIB panel. And once again, it works the same way as um, all the other switches we've been talking about. The one thing that I will point out on this one is uh, this is the only place in the coach that you'll be able to operate the shade here in the bathroom. So uh, you can either put the shade up or down, but for privacy purposes, we don't want somebody in the bathroom and it being able to uh, open and close the shade from a different location. Other than that, lighting shades, fans, Systems all work the same here. Here in the half bath overhead, open these doors here, we have the electrical panel for the 120 volt breakers. Um, so anytime you're plugged into shore power, anytime that your generator is running, uh, these are the breakers that will be supplying power uh, in the coach. Um, this is a sub panel. The, the items listed here below are what's on the inverted panel. So if you have, if you're plugged into shore power or the generator is running, you have pass through uh, electricity from through the inverter. If nothing's plugged in and the inverter's turned on, the inverter will supply power to only these circuits. Okay. If one is tripped, it'll be down about halfway or so. To reset it, you would push it all the way down to off and then back on. That would restore power to that circuit. Here we have the 12 volt a house fuse panel and some spare fuses here to the side. On the door itself here, there's a label that shows uh, what these fuses go to. So these are all numbered. And then if you look over here, the number, it will tell you what they go to. Um, any of these fuses that blow will have to be replaced with the exception of these two silver ones right here. These two silver ones, these are resettable um, fuses or breakers. So the center would pop out in them and you would push it back in to reset them. Other than that, any of them that would blow, you would make sure that you match up the same size replacement fuse with it and replace it don't exceed what the what the label says here for each circuit. So in the half bath above the sink, we have the medicine cabinet. Located inside the medicine cabinet is an outlet. It is a GFI outlet. And if other outlets aren't working in the coach that would be on the GFI circuit, you can come in here and check this. And if the green light is off like this, it'll need to be reset. And so you push the reset button and you'll get the green light back on. Here in the half bath, we have a Dometic macerator toilet. And to flush it, you would simply come over here and press this 
button here that would flush it. It'll run water in there and and uh, grind the contents, pump it to the tank. If you want to fill water, uh, you can press and hold this button here. It will fill the level of the bowl. Um, That'll be a personal preference if you like more water in your bowl, uh, or you may need to add more water in your bowl if you have a lot of solid matter in there. One thing to note on these macerator, well, any of the toilets, but especially the macerator toilets, do not flush any um, thing other than human waste and toilet paper down them. No feminine products. No diapers, no any that type of stuff. It will plug up. Beside the toilet here, we have a storage drawer and a storage cabinet. Then we have the vanity here with the uh, faucet. Turn it on and adjust the temperature to your liking. Above there, we have a outlet that you can push in and pop down. And then underneath the vanity, we have the toilet paper holder and plumbing and whatnot down there for the sink. Below that, we have um, a vent here for the um, heat output from the Oasis. And then below that, we have the um, vacuum central vac system and um, the one we use is called intervac so on this one right here you can sweep debris on the floor to this location open it up and just sweep it into there it will suck it down into the central vac system in the basement there's also a bag of attachments that come with it shift in the basement with it with the coach and it allows you to use different accessories on the on a hose so we'll look at the hose here for just a second so this this port right here is the port for the hose. There's a warning label in there that says, basically, make sure the dust bag's in there. It's also right there on the hose before you plug it in. Make sure the dust bag's in the vacuum. So what you'll want to do is you want to use the attachments. Just Plug that into the port there. Make sure you have a good seal on it. And then this is a remote control to turn that uh, vacuum on. So you can just press the button there and turns it on, press it again, and it turns it off. Since this is a remote and there's no wires that go into this central vac, uh, this is battery operated. So there's a couple of screws here. If this doesn't ever work, you may need to change the battery in here. So you can take that cover off and change the battery. One important thing is when you are actually coil this up in your bag and you stow it, you want to make sure that you stow it in a position where nothing will be pressing against this button inadvertently because um, I'll show you here you don't have to have the hose installed for it to turn the vacuum system on so once you have it connected you want to use the sweeper head or anything like that you can attach those onto here and use it in the coach you can also take this down into the basement where the central vac 
system is there. I'll show you that when we get down there. But there's a port down there that you can also plug this hose into so you could, you know, clean a vehicle or clean your bays as well. Uh, also in the half bath, you have a fantastic fan. Uh, I'm going to show you basically here the, the wood cover can be removed if needed. Uh, allows you to clean the screen or anything like that. Um, there is a little black button up here. This is basically what you see up in there. Um, that can be removed and there's a glass fuse in there. Um, if your fan for some reason reason does not work that would be one thing to check um, if it was dark in here right up in, in and around the fan you could see a little red uh, indicator um, that would be on and that would let you know that the fuse is good but anyway you want to put this back on, just line up the latches and push it back in place and it locks up in there. All right, here in the bedroom, we have a slider door. Right now it's locked back in the travel position. You unlock it and operate the door, pull down on the latch pull it over until it gets all the way against the slide out. It will latch back in place. Um, you can push down on it, unlock it to open it, slide it back, open until it clicks and locks back in place. You should always check that door to make sure it's locked and prior to travel. You don't want that uh, to be able to slide back and forth and and uh, bang against the slide out. Over here at the nightstand, you have a little bit of storage as well as there's a 120 volt outlet in there with USB plugs. And then right below the countertop itself, there is a narrow opening there that you can run like your USB cords through to uh, plug them into the outlet so you can charge your phone or tablet or whatever device you're wanting to charge. <clears throat> above the bed, we have cabinet storage above the bed. There's also a light uh, outlet in the back there. And in the sides here, there's one on each side. There's a port right here that can be opened so that you could run a CPAP uh, hose through there if, you, if needed. Same on this side, more storage and a CPAP hole. And then on this side, another outlet as well with USB and the uh, little space above the door and under the countertop for your cords to go through. Um, above the bed, if you're laying on the bed and looking up, there is another KIB touch panel there that you can do all the things that you could do on the other switches, uh, control lighting shades, uh, check the monitoring panel and whatnot. Uh, also, there, beside there, is a couple of switches for um, speakers. And so those are right here in the, in the uh, ceiling. So you can turn both speakers on or off, or you can have one on and one off. And those are would be playing whatever the dash radio system would be playing. All right, underneath the bed, uh, you can lift the bed and there's storage there. Um, it's where we ship the dinette, folding dinette chairs. Um, but 
there's a little bit of more storage there for other something else as well. On this side of the bedroom, we have the, the TV. We have the repeater here. Um, and then right up here, we have the AV cabinet. So we have some outlets. We have the hookups up here um, that would go to the roof mount satellite um, or uh, here to this TV. So this would be where you'd want to put um, a bedroom satellite receiver if you had one. The outlet here with um, 120 volt output. This screen here is a, another silver release screen. It's identical to the one that we just uh, went over all the function and the features on, except this one is uh, a smaller version. So you can do all the same things on this screen as you could with the larger uh, 10 inch screen by the half bath. Uh, below the TV, we've got drawers for storage down below as well. Here at the windows, I'm going to open this shade. In the event of an emergency, there is an exit window here. You can flip these two red handles open, and then this vent will open up, uh, allow a means of escape <clears throat> when you're done. You simply close it, put these red latches back in place, and lock them down to hold the window tight. The windows that are made like this, um, they can be unlocked and opened. And you open them up into a spot here where they have catches. Um, allow ventilation. They're, these type are usually on the end of the slide outs. And then you can lift the screen up and down if you want. When you get ready to close it, you have to slightly pick up on them and push both tabs locking over so that you can lower the window down and then you can lock it and close. Moving towards the bathroom, we have a louver on each side of the doorway. One is the intake and one is the output for the hydronic heating in this area. As we go into the bathroom, we have another pocket door that has the same type of latch as the front slider door. So you can slide it over, lock it in place. When you want to open it, you have to unlock it, slide it back in place. Once again, this is a door that you want to be in the open position and locked in the open position when you travel. So opening these doors will expose the washer and dryer. So the dryer's on the top. You can open it, put your clothes in. There is a lint trap here that you can need to clean out between cycles. And then you can you have a high and low temp setting here. And then you can set your timer to the desired uh, amount and press the start button to start the, the dryer. On the washing machine, you have your um, detergent and bleach, fabric softener, uh, dispenser there. You have your settings here. You can choose your setting. Your power button over here will turn it on. And one important thing to note on this 
is you put your laundry in and you get ready to do it. We have a notice here um, to remove the outside drain cap before washing uh, using the washing machine. And what that means, and we'll kind of go over it when we go outside to the water compartment, is you need to have your sewer hose hooked up and you need to have the drains open so that the washing machine pumping all this water uh, into the gray tank won't overfill the gray tank. So you want that to drain out into the uh, sewer at your campsite. Down below the washing machine and dryer, the drawer for storage. Moving on over here to this wall, there's a access door that opens. And if you look right back in there, there's the plugs for your washer and dryer and for your, um, your water shutoffs are back in there. Um, one note is they are GFI protected circuits back there. So if you, they're not operating, you can open the door here, look in, and you should see the green lights. Uh, if the green lights are not on, you may have to push the reset button on those, like I showed you on the half bath. In the full bath here, we have a double sink. Underneath the double sink, we've got some room for storage. Um, in this one here, there is a blank GFI back there that says floor heat 2. That's the GFI that's hooked up to the floor heat. So if the floor heat's not working, there's a GFI there that may need to be reset. Uh, basically, storage on this side. And the louvers down below, one's, again, intake and one's output for the Oasis hydronic heating for the rear bath. Um, as we look over here, we have a little storage cabinet. And then <clears throat> above the sinks, we have a medicine cabinet. Um, And there is an additional outlet up here. It's GFCI protected, but it does not have a reset on it. It will reset from one of the other GFCI outlets. And the same here on this side. Um, this KIB panel here operates just like the other ones. I will point out a couple of things on this that are a little bit different. When you go in here to systems on this one, you will have aquamizer light button. The aquamizer light button, when you turn it on, will illuminate a blue light inside the shower. That blue light works in conjunction with this knob right here. So in this position, it has a little etched in icon over here that shows the shower. And on this side, it shows the recycle emblem. So on, on this position, water will come out of your shower if you turn it on. In this position, recycle position, you can recirculate the water from your water tank. It will circulate through here until the water gets hot. It, when the water gets hot, this will turn from blue to red. 
you will know that your water temperature is warm and you can immediately flip this over to the shower position. You would go in here then and turn your temperature selector on and you would choose your selector here between the sh overhead shower head or the wand. So um, it just helps keep you from wasting water. Um, especially when you're using water from your tank. Um, so in a, in a camping situation where you're not hooked up to city water all the time. What, another note on this, if you are hooked up to city water, you can still use this feature, but if you leave this over and recycle very long, you may overfill your fresh tank and you may have water running out underneath your coach. Just remember, if you're on hooked up to city water and you do that, it's not a catastrophe. You, have, you haven't sprung a leak. You left this on and it ran, overfilled the fresh tank and then the overflow ran out on the ground. When you're done taking a shower, you can come back over to this um, aquamizer light here and it, it's in it's in systems and you can turn the aquamizer light off and then you will no longer have an illuminated light in the shower. Another feature in the shower is the fold down seat. You just simply flip it down and flip it back up out of the way for your convenience. One, one last note on the shower, uh, before you travel, uh, when you're actually at the campground, you can leave this door like this. It does have magnetic catches on it, but when you go to travel, you do want to turn this travel lock and then it, this door can't swing open while you're traveling. One more thing on this KIB switch and the full bath is this will be the only place that you can go into shades and operate the door shade here in the bathroom. So we're going to run the door shade up and then we're going to demonstrate <clears throat> over here a couple things. So just like in the half bath, you have another Dometic toilet here that is uh, a macerator toilet. It flushes the same way. You can add water the same way with these two buttons here. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the half bath, but I'll mention it in this one. On either one of these toilets, if this green light turns amber or red, uh, amber is giving you a warning that your uh, tank is almost full. Red is giving you a warning that your tank is full, and if your tank goes to red, it will no longer flush from this panel. Okay, so we're going to look at the emergency exit door here real quick. So to get out this door, you would unlock it, and you would unlock um, the latch here. You would open this door. Grab this panel, pull it off. You don't have to be that gentle if it's an emergency. You can throw the panel down. You grab this Velcro and you just drop this ladder and it will um, extend the ladder down to the ground. All right, once your ladder is flipped down, you can maneuver yourself around the toilet and climb down. Once your emergency is over and you're ready to 
store this back into the door. Simply grab it, push it up there, push it back into place. Grab this Velcro and get it as tight as you can there. And then this door can be put back on here like that. It's held on with magnets and then you can shut the door. Once the door is closed, you can lock it back. All right, here in the full bath, we have the wardrobe. Uh, right here is a travel latch for the wardrobe doors. So when you go to travel, you'll want to make sure that this is in the down position, which will lock these doors, both of these doors, from opening during travel. When you're set up at the campsite, you want to unlock it, and then it will allow you to open these doors. When you open the doors, the switch here will activate the light in the closet. Uh, you have adjustable shelving over here, closet rod at the top, some shoe storage at the back. And then we'll switch sides here. Uh, have some more clo clothing racks. This is a cover panel. Uh, for your AIB lighting controls. And um, as a customer, you shouldn't really need to be in here. Uh, it's more for access for a technician. Over on the back wall here, we have a piece of paper that contains all the model and serial numbers of the appliances in your coach. So, like roof air conditioners, refrigerators, stoves washer dryer all that kind of thing so if you ever need a call in for service and you don't know where to find it on the appliance you can look at that sheet as long as it hasn't been changed out it'll be accurate once again put the little travel latch down prior to travel located in the bedroom uh, on the ceiling is a co2 detector uh, you want to make sure that you press this and test it. Um, as long as you get the LED and the uh, tone, uh, you know it's working. If you don't get that, you can squeeze in on the side a little bit and open this up. There's a 9-volt battery here that's replaceable. And um, so you'd want to replace that battery and retest it. Up in the front on the ceiling is a smoke detector so you can test it and as long as you get the red LED and the audible tone you know your battery is good if you don't get that you can squeeze in on the sides here open it up and replace the battery after replacing the battery you'd want to close it back up and test it again okay so on the outside of the London Air we're going to Start here, uh, see the headlights and the running lights across the top. You'll want to check all your lights before you uh, travel. Uh, I'll, we're going to demonstrate the uh, generator slide here and we'll look underneath the hood. Okay, so we can open this front compartment <clears throat> and we'll have a HWH. Uh, switch in here. The ignition key does have to be on for this to operate. So turn the ignition switch on and um, then you can come out here and operate this. It'll slide out. It'll expose uh, some important things to you here. Get windshield washer fluid bottle here. It's where you'd fill your windshield washer fluid. This filter here would be the filter for your um, Oasis hydronic heating system. That's a diesel fuel filter. Uh, have your street horns and <clears throat> some uh, chassis related 
components here and um, then right here you have auxiliary air and there's a fitting there that's tied to it that fits that in case you want to uh, hook up an air hose to that to inflate um, whatever you might have that needs to be inflated. Uh, right here would be a hot water spigot and right underneath it here is a low point drain for this uh, hot water spigot line. Uh, there'll be a shutoff for this inside the compartments uh, that will shut it off like for during winter use. You'd want to shut it off in that compartment and you'd want to open this low point drain up here so that it didn't have the possibility of freezing and busting. Uh, right up here on the front hood, you have your air horns. And then right beside that, uh, in the center, you have your Onan generator. And just like you can start and stop the generator from the dash area or from the uh, silver leaf panel, you can also do it here. <clears throat> this switch works the same way. You have an hour meter right beside here. And then you have uh, a place here that you can check your coolant level. And then inside this door here, you can press these and pull this out. This would be where you would check your generator engine oil and where you would fill your generator engine oil. Put that door back in place and <clears throat> click the latches back in place. One thing to keep in mind, if you if your generator is running but yet you don't have power inside your coach, this is a breaker right here for that. It could be turned off or tripped. You would want to come out here and check that. It, make sure it's turned all the way off and then flip it back up to the on position. Uh, anytime that's off or tripped, it will not supply power from the generator to the inside of the coach. You go over here to the middle, have your, <clears throat> your dash HVAC system here. Um, and these would be the drains for that. So if you see water dripping out of these lines here, um, <clears throat> that would be uh, normal any time that you have been running the uh, DASH AC system. Uh, right beside, underneath there, you have your HWH pump assembly. This is the pump assembly that controls um, all your hydraulic slide outs, your hydraulic step, your hydraulic generator slide. So <clears throat> there is a reservoir tank there. And there is a, there is a, um, a fill cap with a level indicator on it that you can check your fluid level on. On this type HWH system, you would need to have your slide outs extended and your jacks retracted when you check that. If you check them with the jacks extended and the slide outs retracted, um, you're gonna have more fluid out of there. You, over, you fill it at that point. Then when you retract everything, you're probably going to overfill and make a mess uh, outside of your reservoir here because it's gonna be too full. This tube here uh, is coming from the roof drain uh, so anytime that it's been raining outside or uh, you have snow water that could be um, setting up on your roof, uh, it would be normal to see water dripping out of this line here. <clears throat> There's one of those on each side of the front of the coach and a couple of them in the back as well. Now that we're done in the generator compartment we're gonna run this switch back 
here to retract it. So right here on the front of the windshield right here, that would be your mobile ice sensor. And uh, that's what sees the lanes in front of you and detects uh, uh, if you're crossing the center line or running off the road. Uh, it also uh, is looking at pedestrian traffic or uh, traffic in front of you. In addition to the mobilized system, there's also another collision mitigation system that's housed underneath this panel here. You don't want to put anything in front of that panel. Um, you uh, may get that no uh, CMS display on your dash if there's anything covering that. If, you, if your state requires a license plate or if you like to display a front license plate, there's where you would do that at. It's pre-drilled pre, uh, setup for you. Either of the mirrors that if you need to adjust them more than they will adjust with the electronic switch on the dash, uh, you can loosen the three set screws up here and you can move the top of this mirror uh, back and forth, side to side, tighten that down and it'll hold in place. If you need to move the whole arm, there's a cover here that can be removed. There's a 916 bolt underneath there that can be loosened and then the whole arm can be moved and then retightened in the position that you would like it. All right, uh, so right here in the front, this would be the flagpole bracket. I showed you the flagpole insert in the uh, cabinet when we were in the kitchen. That can be just inserted here, and then that gives you a place for your flagpole. HWH stubs, um, they will operate automatically each time you come in and out the door, unless you have the step over, uh, switch off in the overhead cabinet. If you have it off, it will come out and stay out until um, you either turn it off or you uh, start the coach and release the park brake. At that point, it'll automatically retract in. Um, <clears throat> you have a keyless entry system here that is pre-set from the factory. Um, you can press one and hold it, and you'll hear the compartment doors and the entry door lock. That's a normal function, no matter what the code is set here. Uh, the factory set code is one, two, three, four, four. And then you press one and that will unlock the entry door. Or you press that same one, two, three, four, four, and press two, it will unlock the entry door and the compartment doors at the same time. You will want to reprogram this <clears throat> to your own code. Uh, there's a there's a button button on the side of the steering column that will put it into program mode. There's instructions on how to do that in your owner's manual. Okay, so another way to lock and unlock the entry door is with your key fob. So you can lock or unlock the entry door or the compartment doors here with the key fob. You can also lock the door from the inside manually uh, with the deadbolt. This one here would be the deadbolt up here. Uh, if you lock the deadbolt, none of the key fobs or the outside touchpad will open the deadbolt. That one is manually operated either from the knob inside or the key itself. From the outside then uh, this block here is for the handle portion um, and you can flip this down and man and close the door and that will lock the door 
if you lock it that way with that lock, you can use the key fob to unlock it or this touchpad to unlock it. Or the third way is you can actually use the key to unlock it as well. The key that operates the locks on the door is the larger of the Trimark keys. And that one you can insert and manually operate the deadbolt. Locked or unlocked. The round Trimark key that's not marked 2002 to lock and unlock this uh, portion of the handle. So that's the different ways that you can lock and unlock your door. Right behind the front tire, we have the access panel for the diesel fuel fill. So Open that like any other gas cap. <clears throat> Fill your diesel. <clears throat> that can be done from either side of the coach. Right below there we have a dock light. <clears throat> and then right in front of the um, right in front of the tire here, we have a series of three cables. You can uh, purge your air tanks with those. I'm gonna grab a rod here that will help me do that. So you have a s series of three cables there. One, it's hard to see, but one of them is kind of silver. One's green and one's red. So when you purge these, you should do it daily when it's been, the coach has been operated. <clears throat> but you wanna do the silver one first. That's your wet tank. So you want to drain the wet tank first and then the uh, other two cables after that. If you do the other two cables before you do the silver one, you may get moisture pulled back into those tanks. Um, I'll use this dread thing here just to grab a hold of them because it's easier for me. But you can hear the air purge out of them as I pull each cable. All right, we're going to look at your dread awnings. So I told you as we were going over them in the in the front overhead that. The remote switch kind of mirrored that uh, same outline, and it does. They're just in a little slimmer form here. But you, you uh, on the remote, it's locked, so I'm going to push unlock, and then I can choose my channel, channel 0, 1, 2, or 3. So channel 3 is going to do the door awning, and so I can hit out on it. I can stop it at any point, and I can run it in. <clears throat> I can also turn the lights on and off with the same control here. In the event that the door awning would be in the out position, and for some reason the electric function of it would fail, there is a manual crank rod. And that can be inserted into the awning right up in here. And then it will, you can manually uh, turn this to open or close the awning. Obviously, the preferred method is the electric. You can go to channel zero and hit out, and all, all the awnings will operate at the same time. So the two main awnings plus the door awning will operate. <clears throat> 
once again at any time. Once again, at any time during the process, if you need to stop them, you can hit the stop button and they will stop. Otherwise, they will continue to go out until they hit their limits. They're all the way out. They've hit their limits. They're stopped. I've got the lights on. Um, they do have a, a sensor on them. If they start uh, flopping in the wind too much, they will automatically retract. I'm going to attempt to simulate that. So I've activated the sensor, and that awning is going to automatically retract. It is not recommended to leave your awnings out during heavy winds or rain. In the event that your main awnings would get stuck in the out position, right on the top near the center where the two awnings meet, there's a plastic cap up there and that can be removed in the drawer. The kitchen drawer when the coach is shipped there's a hex rod in the package I showed you earlier that can be once that cap is removed can be inserted in there and a, a cordless drill can be uh, put on there and it can be operated and retract the awning manually <clears throat> once again that would be in an emergency case. All right, we'll go ahead and get started here looking at the compartments. In the first compartment here, we have a freezer and a freezer tray. This can be pulled out, past the slide out, kind of nice so you can open the freezer doors without Now, this particular freezer has a divider in the center, and this can be used as a freezer or a freezer and a refrigerator, or both refrigerator compartments, both freezer compartments, depending on what you set the settings at here for the temperature. The control panel's over here on the side, um, and it will display uh, what you're plugged into here. You're running on AC power, and it shows what the settings here are for the uh, compartments in there. Uh, there is a USB plug here on this side for charging devices, and I believe this system can be uh, Bluetooth uh, into also. So. Uh, you can look at the owner's manual on that. Um, yeah, there's a Bluetooth setting here and a Wi-Fi setting. So you can uh, hook up to those via Bluetooth. Uh, there is a 120-volt <clears throat> and a 12-volt uh, plug here. And... Um, you, the way that Newmar wires these, they can both be plugged in at the same time because <clears throat> if we have 120 volt available, we uh, cut off the 12 volt supply with a relay. Um, up above, there is the myom for the step is up there. That would be the HWH control for the step. And uh, some covers and stuff here for the slide out. Uh, 
uh, motors. This particular slide out on this side is an electric slide out. Next compartment back, we have another manual storage tray. Let me pull it out. There are uh, four matching ceramic floor tiles that came out of the same die lot as the tile in your coach, so that if there's any problem with tile, uh, it can be matched. Uh, this is an accessory kit that's supplied by Spartan uh, for auxiliary air. <clears throat> and these two rods here would be the rods for emergency manual retraction of the HWH slide out room. Um, that procedure is outlined in your owner's guide uh, however we asked that before you would perform that procedure that you would call in and discuss it with um, Newmar service and or HWH <clears throat> they may be able to walk you through how to get it in without going through the <clears throat> extensive manual process the next compartment back, we have another manual slide out tray and your inner vac uh, vacuum accessories. Some more covers and stuff for the um, slide out assembly. And then up in the center of the frame rail, Back here is the Magnum Inverter. Check that. Up there in between the frame rails is the Xantrex Inverter. And there are some reset switches on it. Uh, you can lay down on one of these beds and slide in there. And um, those can be manually reset in there. Okay, in the next compartment back, we have another manual slide out tray. Uh, we have the manual uh, Gerard retraction um, handle for the door awning. Uh, right here is our inner vac. Uh, and I told you earlier when we inside that you could hook the hose up. And this is the port right here that you can open up to attach the hose. Uh, you can either use the remote on the hose to turn it on and off. Or there is a manual switch here to turn it on and off. And then up in this area is also uh, where you pull this open and access the filter. The bag up in here so <clears throat> the bags got holes on both ends you have to get it on the back here on the end and up here on the end <clears throat> this is the control for our camera system our, th our surround camera system on the outside of the coach this uh This control here is for the slide out for the uh, kitchen slide out and then a uh, tile heat controller for the silver leaf system to for it to be able to turn the floor heat on and off and then right here would be the control for the bedroom slide out have a couple of uh, GFCI protected outlets down here for use outside or in the compartments and then uh, there in the center on the 
wall is similar uh, silver leaf uh, components and um, uh, shade controls and whatnot there. Nothing really uh, the customer should have to worry about. The next compartment back is the pegboard compartment. Uh, it's mainly used for storage. A lot of people use it for um, chemicals and oils and stuff like that that they would carry with them. Um, right behind the pegboard is the tanks. So uh, you don't want to be running any screws or anything like that into the um, through the pegboard. Um, it's okay to use the pegboard hooks, but can't be using any long screws in it. Behind there, we have uh, marker lights and a docking light. And then these sensors here, uh, there's one at the back, one in the middle, one at the front. Those are for the um, blind spot detection that will come on in the outside mirrors. If there's traffic over here on this side of you, uh, you'll see a orange or yellow light in the uh, mirror indicating that there's um, an object on the, the side of you. Could be either mirror, depending on which side of the coach it's on. <clears throat> In between the drive and tag axle is your jack and your HWH rear jack. And um, those are good after you get done retracting your jacks to make a loop around the coach. And just verify visually that your jack pads are up. So you can see the front one is in behind the front tire and the rear ones are in between the rear tires. <clears throat> Moving on to this compartment, the DEF tank is here. Uh, simply remove that by twisting it like a quarter turn. You can fill up your DEF there and reinstall your cap. There's also a manual uh, suspension fill ports right there. In the event of an emergency, they can be filled there. Um, for more information on that, see your Spartan manual. Moving on back to the rear compartment on the passenger side, we have your, the chassis batteries. We have the two chassis battery disconnects. Uh, these are breakers and disconnects, so 150 amp and 200 amp, if they uh, see more amperage than that, they can trip. So if you have a problem with not having power somewhere on the chassis side, you can come in here and turn these off and turn them back on and reset them. Um, there are chassis fuses right here in this round cover. Just give that about a quarter turn or so. Remove it. There's a few extra fuses here in it. And there's also a legend that tells you what the fuses are for. Um, and there's also some relays in there. Um, if you're having any issues with your... Uh, tow vehicle lights um, they are powered through this fuse panel right here so that would be the first place I would check for a blown fuse and then you can put the cover back on and twist it back in the Just the back locked tight. Uh, there is a fuse here. It comes from the solar panel. Um, 
it's labeled there seven and a half amp. This is your air dryer filter, and this would be your uh, diesel fuel uh, water separator and filter from uh, supplying the engine. So there is a drain port here on the bottom. If you see water starting to accumulate in here from some poor fuel that can be drained out. Then this would be the air governor for the chassis air system. Before we pass everything up here on the uh, outside here, we kind of go back up here and catch some of the stuff that we pass going through the compartments. Um, there you got window awnings, and we talked about those being operated up there in the front overhead cabinet. That's where your switches are for those. You have your outside entertainment center. Um, there, this TV is mounted on a arm, so it can be pulled out and twisted here to your liking. And when you're done with it, push it back in place and the magnets hold it in place. There's a 120 volt outlet with USB ports that can be used for uh, charging our uh, 120 volt appliances. It's also this Bose selector. That's for the Bose speaker right here underneath the TV. So you can either have it set to TV so that the TV output goes to the speaker you can also have it turned off, or you can have it turned on to dash radio. If you have it turned on to dash radio, on the dash radio itself, you'll need to put the dash radio into house mode for the output to be piped out here. When you're done with this compartment, you can close it back up. It can be locked with the keys on the key ring. Um, this camera here is be your midship surround camera or your side view camera, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the light up there beside the window would be the passenger side security light. And then as you can see, both slide outs have slide out toppers on them. And those come in, uh, go in and out with the slide out. So you don't have to do anything special to get those to cover the slide out. They're attached to the wall and the slide out. So as the slide out comes out, they come out. As the slide out goes in, they go back in. Uh, it is important that uh, you check for any debris underneath them or on top of them before you run the slide rooms in. Debris underneath could uh, keep the slide out room from closing all the way at the top. Debris on the top could keep the <clears throat> topper from rolling in uh, correctly or rolling in all the way. Earlier I showed you the emergency exit door. There's no uh, handle or no way to get in it from the outside. Um, it has to be open from the inside and um, so it's just strictly an emergency door. Uh, one thing that you do want to do is you do want to make sure that when you close it that you close it really firmly so it's nice and flush. Um, it can be closed there's the latch is a two position latch. There's a first catch and a second catch. You want to make sure that you do get it into the second catch. And around to the rear engine area. Got the rock guard down below. Um, this would be your tow plug for a trailer or vehicle that you're towing. 7-pin bargeman standard wiring, and then this would be for your tow brake. Uh, this is not intended for air brakes on a trailer, but this is intended to be used 
uh, with the air activated systems like Air Force One or something equivalent to that. Um, you can find out more information from Spartan on that. That's uh, pre-installed from Spartan. So to open the rear engine door, you just pull down on this uh, catch and um, open the door. It is gas strut um, assisted, so it will stay up once you open it. Uh, we talked about earlier the block heater plug. So this is the block heater plug, and this is the block heater itself that's plugged into it. Um, if you leave it plugged in like that, you can simply uh, operate it from your silver leaf screen, uh, turn the block heater on and off when you're in cold temperatures and it's needed. Here we have the um, engine coolant antifreeze. Uh, it is a special antifreeze. You want to use final charge if you have to add any. And then this is the full indicator right right there. You should always see like a pink um, fluid there in this uh, little sight window. Here's auxiliary air output and the fitting that matches this fitting here. Comes from Spartan. Uh, <clears throat> the engine needs to be on and the compressor running for you to get uh, good pressure out of here. The tanks will hold a little bit, but they're not huge, so they'll run out fast if you're uh, trying to use air without the engine running. Uh, engine oil fill, engine oil dipstick right here. And then this would be the um, hy engine hydraulic fluid for like power steering and stuff. And you can unscrew that a little bit and pull that out, check it. It's the dipstick, put it back in and tighten it down. Um, <clears throat> right here, this reservoir right here is the oasis surge tank so as the fluid is heated in the oasis system it will come in here um, and then uh, as it cools down it'll suck some of it back out of here uh, you always want to keep it, the uh, oasis fluid up in here and this also uh, is a special antifreeze and it's uh it's Century, Century brand antifreeze. It's available through the Newmar Parts Department. Uh, we have the Allison transmission uh, dipstick and fill tube right here. Uh, those engine, the transmission uh, fluid levels can also be checked electronically after the transmission is warm through the touchpad up by the driver. This would be the filter minder um, and it should always operate right here somewhere in the green area. So long as it's in the green area it does it's fine. Uh, once it gets up here to the red area um, your filter is clogged too much and it's uh the engine needs more air so that's just an indicator on when to change your filter when it gets up into the red there is a another large fuel filter here uh in this below this housing right here that uh need to be changed at the recommended intervals also i think that wraps up the rear engine area so when you want to close it, just push that down and make sure it latches in place. That latch will go up in there and hold it. Right here above the 
engine compartment, we have another camera. That camera is uh, used for the um, reverse and 360 camera views. Third brake light. And this screen right up here is where the engine air intake uh, picks up the air. So you don't want to ever have that covered or <clears throat> any debris up in there. If it is, you want to clean that area. This area here is uh, your radiator, your condenser, and your air charge cooler. Um, so this area also needs to be kept clean and free of debris. Right here you have uh, another fill for the DEF tank. If you need to fill from this side instead of from the other side, gives you that option. This little compartment right here is not a sealed compartment. It's designed for a sewer hose and it has a couple holes in it so that if you have anything left in the sewer hose that would drain out, it would run out there as well. Once again, you can see the jacks be between the tires. Good, good practice to walk around it before you leave and make sure those are all stored up in the retracted position. Right here on the sidewall, we have the dryer vent. And then this would be the main HWH full wall slide right here. And we're going to take a second and uh, run this room in, uh, give us some better access to the compartments underneath. So we're going to run this slide room in. So we've started our coach up. We've retracted our jacks. We have air pressure in the system. We're um, up on the airbags. So we've already checked those things. The other things we need to check is make sure that there's clearance here between the slide out fascia and the chair. We can move the chairs forward and then make sure that nothing else is in the way in the path of travel. So we're going to go ahead and hit the end button for that. Once again, we're going to um, hold this button until the room lifts all the way up. Once it lifts all the way up, it'll automatically start coming in. We're going to leave it coming in until it stops and the actual pump will shut off after about three or three to 10 seconds like that. Now, once you hear that and the motor unwind like that, you can shut the switch down. Once we get to the campsite, before we run our slide outs out, we want to come out and make a visual check to make sure that we have clearance on the, between the Z trim and the uh, slide out fascia. And we just want to make a visual check around that on make sure that none of it's touching anywhere and that it's fairly even. It looks good. So in this case, we're on airbags um, and our reveal looks good. We visually checked outside to make sure that there's nothing in the way of running the slide out out. We can go inside, we can make sure that the chairs are forward and there's nothing in the way of the slide out running out from the inside as well. Once we do that, we can push the out button for the, this room, hold it until it comes all the way out, drops down, 
and shuts off, then we can release that uh, slide out switch. We're going to take a look here at the water compartment. We'll just start over here with components and try to do how to use them here in a minute. These are your winterizing valves and the winterizing hose. Whole house filter. Um, if you need to open this to install the filter or replace the filter, the filter is going to come like this. You would want to take the plastic off of it. From the top here, there's a red button. You would want to push that red button to release any pressure in the canister. There's a white wrench in, inside. If you can't turn it off by hand, there's a white wrench that will slip right up over the, there. It's in the uh, cabinet when it's shipped in the kitchen. So you would take this plastic off, insert this down in there. There's a post in the bottom for it to fit onto this hole. You would slide that on there, and then you would put this back up in here and tighten it up. And if hand tight's not enough, you can use the wrench to snug it just a little bit. Okay, next here we have your gray and black tank rinses and the gray and black tank low point drains. As I go through dumping the tanks here in a minute, we'll explain how to use this. Some instructions here on winterizing. We'll cover those here in a minute as well. RV SantaCon switch, just an off on switch. And we'll cover that as we're talking about dumping tanks here as well in a minute. So once you get to the park, or if your park doesn't have uh, a city water hookup, you would, when you get to the campground and you get to their potable water station, you would pull this hose out and connect this to the potable water source. And then this valve here will select between auto tank fill and auto city supply or city supply with auto override or manual tank fill. So if you're at a campsite that has city water available all the time, you would choose one of these two selections. You can just do city, city water without any tank fill, or you can do city water with an automatic tank fill. Now, just because you leave it in this position doesn't mean that the tank will automatically fill. That just means that the valve is set for that, to have the ability to do that. You, ha you have to go into your Silverleaf screen and enable the tank fill in the water screen which can be done from down here or inside the coach on the Silverleaf panel. But for this to be active, you'd have to go in here and, and turn on the autofill. The other selection that you have here is if you turn this down into this position, this will bypass the autofill and will manually fill the tanks. Um, you can monitor the tanks as you're filling them. Here in the home screen, you can watch the fresh tank level increase. If you don't stop this and change it to one of these other settings, when the tank gets full, it will overfill and start to spill out on the ground on the other side. And then next here, we have the paper towel holder, the outside shower, which 
this can just be used to rinse off anything out here, wash your hands, whatever you need. Just turn the valve on and off and select the temperature. Once you're done with the water hose, there is a power switch right here. You can flip the switch and then it will wind the hose back up. You can put your cap on the end there so dirt and debris doesn't get into your potable water hose. Just push it in there out of the way. Now, we're going to talk about dumping the tanks. So, there's two options. The first one I'm going to talk about is the macerator. So, if we're going to use the macerator, we would want to open that up. Pull this hose through here. cover sets right in there. <clears throat> we would take this end here over to the sewer dump. We would open this large cap. We would insert this end without the cap in the sewer dump. Then we would come in here And right here is a gray handled valve back here towards the back. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. Okay. So you would open this valve. You'd open it like that. Then you would come over here and you would open the black tank first. And they're marked here. This one's gray and this one's black. So you'd open this one up first. Turn on the RV SantaCon. It would grind and pump out the waste into the sewer dump. Then we would turn off our SantaCon for a second. We would open the hose connection here for the black tank rinse. Hook our hose up to the black tank rinse. A lot of the sewer dumps, or it depends if you're at a full hookup or not, but a lot of the sewer dump areas have a water hose there that says non-potable water. That would be where you would want to hook th this up. Anyways, you hook that up to it. Make sure that these, the low point drain here is in the closed position. That will supply water pressure to spray out into the black tank. Now you still have that black tank valve open. So now that you're running water into the black tank, you can turn the RV SantaCon back on. And as that water sprays out in there and things rinse down, uh, the Santa Con will be grinding it and pumping it out. Once you're done flushing the black tank, you would turn off the RV Santa Con, close the black tank valve right here. Then you would open this black tank rinse, low point drain, and it would remove any pressure that's in this line prior to you taking this hose off. So, uh, so you take that, take your hose off there, cover that back up. Then we do the same process for the gray tank. Open the gray tank valve, turn the RV SantaCon on. It will grind and pump out anything that's coming out of the gray tank. 
It will also, doing the gray tank after the black tank will help rinse out any <clears throat> uh, solid debris from the black tank out of the hose. And then before you're done with that one, you'll want to do the same thing. You'll turn it off for a second, leave it open, but come up here, open the gray tank valve, put your non-potable water hose to, to that connection. Make sure this is in the closed position. You'll rinse out your gray tank. Turn your Santacon back on. Rinse out the stuff in your line. When you're done, you'll turn the RV Santacon back off. You'll open this valve. That'll drain the pressure off of this so you can disconnect it without it spraying at you. Once the hose is disconnected, cover that back up. And that concludes dumping the tanks with the RV Santacon, with the exception of putting the cap back on and pulling the hose back in um, to this area. The other thing you can also do is you can also turn this valve off here so that there's no pressure getting into this line here so you can pull this line back up in here make sure your cap's tight and that it's stored there out of the way okay number two way to dump your tanks connect your four inch drain hose to this outlet here Run it through here, run it over to your sewage dump. There again, you would be opening this black tank, a sewage tank valve, and flushing out your black tank first. You would not turn this RV SantaCon on. Second of all, once you got the black tank dumped you would do your rinse on it then you would close this valve once you were done with the black tank you would then proceed to the gray tank open the gray tank valve and um, all that water from those tanks has been coming down through this box which is the SantaCon but it's SantaCon is not running it just you're just bypassing it and then you have this valve open here that's going into the hose so all that's coming through here it's draining and you've got the gray tank drained you can go ahead and rinse it once you're done rinsing it you close that valve close this valve disconnect your hose um, and rinse out your hose going to the sewage dump. And then you can take that hose and store it into this compartment here. Okay, so that's the two ways to dump. We'll look real quick here at the Silverleaf screen. This is a smaller Silverleaf screen with a little bit limited functionality on it. It doesn't have all the icons on it that you have on the big screens on the inside of the coach, but you can still view your tank levels, your water screen. You can turn your water pump on and off and your autofill. The lights out here are limited to just the outside security lights so you can turn on the security lights on either side of the coach you can also go to the gen set screen you can start the generator from this position the other thing that you can do and this is just going to depend on uh, your preference and how the landscape is where you're dumping your tanks at um, some places are really level. Some places are tilted towards 
the dump already and some places are not. But this will allow you to tilt the coach somewhat. It uses the airbags and the coach must be running for this to work. But you can go into the tilt menu and hit start and it will tilt the coach uh, by lifting up the airbags on the opposite side of the coach. That's a quick rundown of that panel. To winterize, you would <clears throat> recommended that you would hook up here with compressed air not exceeding 60 PSI and you would blow wa air through the water system and you, you, you could open the low point drains first to drain those on the hot and cold open the faucets that'll get a lot of the water out but recommended that you actually hook up with air and blow through the system blow it out at each faucet and then um, open this up, take this off, put it in your potable RV antifreeze bucket, and then reverse these valves. You'd open this one and close this one. And what that does is it allows the fresh water pump to suck the antifreeze in through here into the pump and it would then pressurize the system and you would run antifreeze out at each faucet each appliance that has water going to it and make sure that there's enough water that's ran through all those items that it fills up the drains and the p-traps and winterizes those as well the other thing that you'd want to do prior to running your antifreeze through is to take out all your filters so your filter here in your whole house filter your filter in your refrigerator and any other appliance or device that might have a water filter in it you want to take those out when you're done in this area dumping and cleaning up you can spin this plug back in And you also want to put this cover back on here so that you have the added security of if that lever valve would get opened, it wouldn't be dumping out in your um, compartment. Next compartment forward be your electrical compartment so this is a lot like your uh, water hose it's manually pulled out and then when you want to retract it the switches here on the compartment door it r rolls it up we have a hatch here that you can put the cord into so that the door can be shut when you're plugged in and then there's another hatch right here that can be used uh, these are for coaches that have the uh, 30 or 50 amp trailer outlets uh, you can run the power cord up through there plug it in and Close that around your cord while you're plugged in. This would be your automatic transfer switch. There's a couple of uh, LED lights on it here. Um, those are, there's a little instruction sheet over here on what they mean, but 2 of them being on solid is good. There's also a, 
a monitor panel here for the automatic transfer switch and it will show you what line one and line two voltages are and uh, it will also display if there's any faults here on this. This is also right here where your cable gets connected if you have part cable available where you camp. Uh, you would take your coax cable from their outlet and hook it up to here. And then once again, you would have that uh, TV antenna turned off in the front overhead cabinet to be able to get it the signal through to your TVs. Uh, in, in addition, in this compartment, there is a Velcro cover that's behind the cord rail here that can be removed. <clears throat> On the back side of that cover is uh, legend labels here for what the breakers and fuses go to and what the amperage of the of them are what the amperage of the fuses are um, there are a couple of resettable uh, fuses in here and they either have yellow or red um, tabs in the middle of them and they would pop out if they were tripped and then you could push them in on the center and reset them. Uh, the rest of these are standard ATC fuses and um, they, if they go get blown you just have to replace them. There are some extra fuses up in the front uh, compartment. We'll get to those in a minute. Uh, this would be your <clears throat> house 12 volt battery disconnect and this solenoid here would be your <clears throat> charge bridge sol solenoid that connects the house and the chassis batteries together uh, while the vehicle is charging from either the alternator or being plugged in or the generator running based on a bunch of parameters that have to be met. So it doesn't automatically uh, connect the whole time. If it is uh, connected, it will say bridged up there on the main silver leaf panel like we talked about earlier. Um, there is also a, another panel down here that has some fuses on it that is not on this label. They're the, they're the components that are controlled by the silver leaf system. When you're done in here, you can take this cover and bend it back around here. Once you get it back there, you can Velcro it back in place. The compartment forward of that houses the Oasis hydronic heating system. A couple things that's important for the customer. If they need to know how many hours is on their system, there's an hour meter right here on the top. The other thing is in this panel here, this power button needs to be on so this power LED is lit up. If that is not turned on here, then turning it on in the silver leaf panel will not operate it. So you need to have it on here and then also turn it on in the silver leaf panel for it to operate. Then down here, low water, low voltage, flame out, igniter, combustion fan. These, these are going to show faults. They'll be red if there's a problem with them. So like if you get low on hydronic 
fluid in here and it went into low water, it would keep it from turning on until it, the system was filled back up. But once the condition is fixed, you can press the reset and usually it will take off and run again. There is uh, some service that is required on this diesel burner. See your Oasis manuals for how often. And in the event that the serv something would happen with the server leaf system, there is an Oasis panel here that would allow you to turn the burner and the AC element on and off without being hooked up to the server leaf panel. Uh, this panel would connect into the silver box over here. And the silver box over here also has some LEDs on it and shows what's going on with the zones. So green LEDs are good on there. If there's a fault on it, it will also show that. And underneath that cover, there are a couple of fuses for the zones also, if one of those is down. Okay, this compartment here, uh, pass through bay with this manual sliding tray. So this tray will slide out either side as long as your <clears throat> stuff is not stacked up past the frame rails. Uh, also in this compartment is some of your wiring and plumbing uh, going to the slide out. So this, uh, this slide out here has a heated water line that's in the, that connection there. And then the next one has some wiring in it. Uh, right here in between, close to the frame rail here, you see there's a valve right here and it's in a red water line. That is the shutoff going up to that front uh, hot water spigot that we talked about when we were looking underneath the hood. And I said if, uh, if you were running in cold weather, you'd want to turn this off there and drain that low point drain up there for that hot water spigot. That would be where the valve is. Moving forward here into the next <clears throat> compartment. Again, we have a pass-through bay with a manual slide out. In this bay, we have the Xantrex solar controller. That one is the one that's hooked up to that remote panel that we've seen in the front overhead cabinet. So basically the same thing you see up here, you can see on this screen down here, it's just a whole lot more convenient to see it up there in the front overhead cabinet. All right, moving forward into the next compartment. This would be the battery compartment. And <clears throat> so this battery tray is a manual tray as well, but it also has pins that manually need to be removed, manual lock pins. Then this can be slid out so that you can check and clean, keep the battery terminals clean and everything. These are sealed AGM batteries. They do not need fluid added to them. The maintenance on these is pretty much just making sure that you keep the terminals clean on them. Once you're done in there, you can shut that battery tray and put the lock pins back in place. And then over here to the side, we have, these would be the main 12 volt fuses uh, coming from the battery banks that would be going <clears throat> to the coach or to the inverter. If you ever, are 
working on the batteries, cleaning them, and you forget how the connections are made there. There's a diagram right here to the side. All right, up here on the front fender, have the marker light, the dock light, and then you have another fuel tank fill. Coach can be filled from either side or both. The hub wrench that I showed you in the packet in the kitchen, that's what goes on this right here to unscrew this to remove that hub cap if needed. Behind that hub cap, you can see the sight glass for the hub where it is in an oil bath. One thing I didn't mention, I thought of it here, generator exhaust and then back there, by the water compartment, the Oasis exhaust. Those both, if they're operating, can be very hot. Any water hoses, electric lines, or anything that you would have running to the coach, you would wanna make sure that those are not directly under where that exhaust is coming out. They may melt. Okay, up here in the front electrical compartment, you have your spare fuses here. You have your HWH generator compartment slide that we operated earlier. Once again, for that to operate, the key has to be on. The key is off right now, so the panel is dead. This is the KIB fuse panel. And if any of these fuses are blown when the ignition key is on, the red light would be on the corresponding LED. It is stamped right on the, lettered right on the panel, what the fuses go to. And then <clears throat> this panel here would be the Spartan the chassis fuse panel. Uh, for what they power in the cockpit area. So, like power seats and stuff like that would be on this fuse panel. But there's four screws that can be undone here. Give you access to the this fuse panel and then the legend label on what they go to. There is a few standalone fuse fuses here. That one right there goes to the HWH system. Right up here in the corner is the junction box for the living room floor heat. And then right here on the side you have window washer tool to help you reach the <clears throat> windshield area. Just snaps back in place. Put this back on. Just uh, put this back up here. Line up the screws. <clears throat> All these compartments have magnetic switches here for the compartment lights in that area. So once the door is closed, the light will go out. Any of these compartments, once again, can be locked, unlocked from the switch on the passenger console, from the um, grab handle keypad, or with the key fob remote, as well as manually with the key that's on the key ring that fits those.